The con itself was super underwhelming. So you left the con to go eat? You're absolutely right I did. No, that you, you I don't know if you were being sarcastic, but yes, a, a million percent. Including one day where I can't be trusted in a state where weed is that legal. As it turns out, me and my little resin pin, me and my little resin pin got high and blacked out in the partner lounge. And then I woke up and turned to Brizzy and I was like, I need pasta. Will you walk with me to Little Italy? And when you ask somebody named Anthony LaBrizzy if he wants to go to Little Italy to eat pasta, you're going to be shocked to find out the answer is yes. So, I uh, flew on down to San Diego. Brizzy wasn't super jazzed on leaving his home and going to California. Uh, but he rallied. Food prices and quality were abysmally bad at the con. I never ate anything at the con except for a couple of snacks from the partner lounge. Like I didn't, I didn't even know there was food at the con. <clears throat> so I 100% just walked off to restaurants every time I was hungry. Honest to God, Jay the 111. When I got Brizzy to Little Italy, he was walking around like, why do I feel so at ease right now? I feel like I'm home. Sure, Foo. But I mean, like that was the whole point of this, this entire thing, right? Was I was like, I'm going to drag your ass out of your comfort zone. And you're going to see whether or not this feels like it's you. San Diego's downtown is walkable, Sideline Boyo. It's downtown area is walkable. But like there was a ramen place that we wanted to go to called Minya Ultra. Uh, where we, we met up with Pogman and his wife. Um, that that was definitely like a 25 minute cab ride. And still technically in San Diego. I broke and had one square of burnt pizza during the final round of goodbyes. No, not me. Even then, Pete. There was a place that was like a shitty hole in the wall pizza by the slice joint by my hotel. And I also spent like $20. I got two slices and a can of soda. And I took one slice back to Brizzy and Brizzy goes, there's not any tomato sauce on this. But otherwise, he's like, this is actually not a bad slice. And it was from like a shitty hole in the wall place. Like there were flies inside the case where the pizza was. And I was like, whatever, she's putting it in an oven. But it, it, it had that, it had that like uh, street pizza feel to it. Anywho, uh, day zero got, I'll, I'll try to kind of speed run it a little bit. Day zero got down there. Uh, I wish I'd taken more photographs of like events. Uh, day zero, I got down there, uh, met up with Santa who does our, our, our timer. I don't know if it's still on here. Here it is. This overlay is called the Santa timer. Um... So he does that for us as a lifelong friend of the channel. Uh, and the, a handful of people from Devolver Digital. Uh, Indrani from Devolver Digital and Jess from Devolver Digital and JM from Devolver Digital. Um, and that was a good time. And then we went and got our badge. And we got to meet Chloe, who was the person who was running partner support, who helped us get all that crazy bullshit with the hotel sorted. Uh, which was really nice. The hotel itself was, man, okay, so like, Brizzy and I get to the hotel, and I don't know how many of you saw this. This is the first thing you see when you walk through the door. The central focus of the room, because like the bathroom's all over here to the left, and then the living area is all over here to the right, and then there's just a little hallway in between. The, so the central focus of the room is the shower. There is a curtain here. It does not close all the way. Brizzy actually had swim trunks that he hung right here to dry out that he wore whenever he showered while I was around in case I needed to take a leak because the toilet was tucked in the closet back here. So like if I needed to take a leak while he was showering... I'd have to walk past the side over here with no curtain. It honest to God, I, I told Amber, I was just like, I almost called Amber to ask for a hall pass, not for sex, but I did want to hire like a buxom stripper and be like, here's a thousand dollars to take a soapy bath in our shower booth in the middle of our, in the middle of our hotel bedroom. No touch rules still apply. You got to get out when, when the dance is done. But it felt wasted on us because there was just no lathery titties, you know, peach imprints mushed up against the glass. <laughs> Intimate, you like it? I would have loved this if I was here with my wife. I would have insisted that every shower was done with this curtain wide open. But instead, I was there with my yay tall Italian buddy.
You could have lathered your titties for Brizzy. You know what sucks? You know, like out of all of this, the thing that irritates me the most, and maybe this is just my boomer mannerisms coming through. They had over here on this wall, it was pretty crazy. I did find myself setting these dials so that water was coming out of this one and this one. And then I would just walk back and forth. It was great for my ADHD. For the part of me that doesn't even want to hold still in the shower, I would walk back and forth between spigots and just pace while I was taking my shower, which was nice. On this wall, though, uh, you can't really see it. There's three uh, soap pumps for shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. I fucking hate body wash, man. Just give me a bar of soap. Like, I've, like, body wash has been becoming a thing since the 90s when I was a teenager. I thought I don't give a shit about body wash. I hate it. I just, I just want a bar of soap. A bar of soap that I can take and I can cram in all my musty spots. Really lather the shit out of the places that stink. And not have to keep revisiting the pump for, please, sir. Blech. Yeah, pits and bits, man. You can really dig in there and clean those areas out with a bar. I didn't pack a loofah, you know? Body wash is cheaper and technically more hygienic-ish, but it's only my bar, you know? Use a wash washcloth? I guess I could have. I haven't used a washcloth since the 80s. I didn't, I didn't bring, like, the exfoliating poof. I feel like that. I just saw this argument on TikTok. Like two women were on a podcast and one of them said, do you use a, a wash rag? And one lady was just like, of course, what else would you use to scrub yourself clean? And the other lady was just like, you just use your hands. And I'm in, I'm in the hands camp. I haven't used a washcloth since the Reagan administration. I don't even know where the washcloths are in my house. Like, I didn't even know that that was meant to be like a controversial thing. How do you get clean? I, I use my fingers to scrub soap into the hair, which is in the musty bits. See, there is a hard divide right down the middle of chat. I didn't even realize it was controversial until like this week. Hands don't scrub dead skin off. The only place I worry about scrubbing dead skin off is like my heels with a pumice stone. Otherwise, I'm not sweating it. I'm not worried about exfoliating on any other part of my body. Indifference is my skin skincare routine. but that's not clean. There are other people who don't even think you need to shower every day. I saw another person who said that showering daily is, is performative. So I don't know. I feel clean enough after I don't feel particularly gross when I shower every morning, but I do feel like I'm rinsing the sleep off me. You know, that like that musk that ac accumulates after like eight hours of being in your PJs. I get in there and I hit the spots that I know would be offensive to anybody who put their nose in them. Get myself nice and clean, get, get like a good running start at the day. But like, I smell fine when I'm out of the shower. My parents used washcloths on me when I was a kid in Texas. Oh, you got the little exfoliating glove. It's cute. I'm not like mad at it or anything. I certainly wouldn't pack one to take it with me on vacation. I use a loofah with bath soap, then I'll use a washcloth and moisturizing soap every time I pull away dead skin. I know you can pull away dead skin with your fingers, but it doesn't really do enough. I, I tell you what, Snarky, if I'm being real, I bet you if I, de if I developed that kind of skincare routine, if I, felt, if I felt calm enough while bathing, generally when I'm showering, I'm 15 minutes late for stream. So I don't really have time for anything other than shampoo, soap, soap, soap and then i run in here <clears throat> but if i had if i had the the 
comfort level necessary if i had if i was at ease enough to like actually develop a routine and give myself time to do it every day i bet you i would like an exfoliating skincare routine i think i would like the the ritual of it um this is why people think white people don't wash our legs Eh, I mean, I, I, I give him a once over. I used to have a roommate who ironically enough in this situation is black. Uh, I, I had a roommate who used to give me shit because he was just like, you wash your legs, right? And I was like, soap runs down my legs. And he was just like, God damn it, Taffy. Fucking white people. I run my hands down it these days. I, I like I'll I'll get just about as far down as my calf. My back hurts. I don't like bending over. I hit my head on the soap deck. There's like a little soap uh um What what's the word I'm looking for, chat? Help me. It's is such a simple word. Shelf. God almighty. Um there's like a little soap shelf that's built into my shower. My shower is a very narrow standing shower. And so like I, I have cracked my head on the back of that thing on a couple of occasions. And so I have a tendency to be like, ah, fuck my ankles. I would love to sit in the shower. And if I'm being honest, snarky one, I think somebody might have been glitch bought me a shower head. That's one of those ones that you can pop like, like this one up here. Although I never figured out how to take this one off. Um... Someone bought me a detachable shower head for my shower stall, and the only thing that stopped me from using it is just I'm too lazy to install it. I keep waiting for hopefully Amber to come around to it. Uh, my feet never stink. Thank you and good day. That's the thing is if is if I was if I was like Pigpen, I feel like some of, some of you were some of you were like worried about like uh 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 like problems or or uh def like physical uh ailments that like while it may it may occur for some people you know it's like oh well i do these 35 different things every day and that's what keeps the stink away and it's like well what if you did three of those things and it kept the stink away and the other 33 are just a a habit or a routine or a ritual at this point um yeah, if I if I had stinky feet all the time, with the number of roommates I've had at cons, somebody would have told me. But like, I don't have yeah, I don't uh, I don't have a problem with bo. So I just feel like I I I may be doing the bare minimum, but I'm doing enough to get across the finish line. Hawford, what's going on, friend? <clears throat> I, I, I do have a bit of a phobia about smelling bad, which is why I shower every day. And I think if the, if I continued to smell bad, um, like if I forget to put on deodorant, I'm a wreck for the rest of the day. You'd be surprised what people won't tell each other. No, nah, you just need to surround yourself with more honest people. I disagree. We got back into the house last night. And Brizzy, who's been in a hotel room with me this entire time, turned to my wife and goes, your husband farts nonstop. That was how he re-greeted my wife. I have a feeling Noah's, Noah's feet stunk so bad when we first met him that we put his shoes inside of a bag and threw them out the window of the 18th floor of the W Hotel in Boston. So... While I'm not surprised that other people are victims of decorum, uh, that is not the situation I find myself in with my friend group. <clears throat> in his defense, he did turn to my wife and say, his farts never stink, but he is very loud even when he's quiet. So I was, I was grateful for at least the qualifier of like, did our room stink? I just have a noisy butthole. <clears throat> um... Yeah, I, I am I am mortified at the idea of smelling bad. So I, I keep that at bay, but the regimen necessary to keep that at bay for me is like three steps, not 30. 
I'm not saying that 30 wouldn't make me feel pretty. 30 might make me feel like a radiant princess, but I don't often allot myself time for 30 steps. That's true. Brizzy was sleeping down by my feet, so... He, I feel like I, that, that's exactly right. This folded out and Brizzy's head was here and my feet were here, so... I feel like he would have let me know. Um... Anywho, damn, I didn't expect the first 30 minutes of stream to be the shower leading into do you, don't you washcloth leading into the whole, like, what is your hygiene regimen? No, what is your hygiene regimen? <clears throat> Oh, no, Lisa, I totally get it. I totally get it. If I don't shower, like, Brizzy would take gaps where he, like, he would not shower. He looked fine because his hair, his hair is basically shaved off. He looked fine, which is always a thing for me. I don't want to look poorly put together, even when, even when I'm schlubby. Like, I want it to look like I knew I was going outside. So he looked fine, you know, on a once-over. And I sat next to him on a plane for five hours each direction, and he didn't smell bad. And so I was just like, well, I wish I was the kind of person who could ditch the morning shower and not smell, like, lightly funky. What was best response to the farting comment? A long sigh and then just a silent nod. I did have the defense to make that flying fucks up my, my gastrointestinal system. Something about the pressure... Something about the, the, you know, the, 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 for the same reason, if I could put a compression sock on my gut, I would. But it, 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 something about, something about like the end of a long flight, the moment that I get comfortable in a hotel room, I've got to, I've got to balance things out. I blame the pegging would have been a good one. Uh, if only. <laughs> the best response would have been a long fart without breaking eye contact. I, I did on a number of occasions just warn him. I was like, listen, man, it's coming. It won't smell bad, I promise. Uh, Right. Hotel room. Oh, don't worry. If you were worried that, like, if you were worried that that was the end of the hotel drama, stick around for the end of the story, and I'll be happy to fill you in with one more the gift that keeps on giving the Andaz Hotel in San Diego. <clears throat> Famous last words, it won't smell bad. Well, I mean, you know, I get I coast on that until one does. And then at that point, I'm like, well, I'll either excuse myself to go outside or I will strain to get a shit out. <clears throat> um, I'm right until I'm wrong, you know? And then when I'm wrong, I'm like, oh, I don't get to pull that card anymore. I've got to go take a shit. Um, we bumped into Soren and uh, Santa at the airport in San Diego and caught rides in. This was like the ninth photo that Soren had taken, so I was kind of over it. Um... Went with Santa down to um, Devolver Lunch. Went and got my badge and thanked Chloe. And yeah, Soren and his porcelain doll fingers. He's like a Stephen King novel with those weird ass little fingers. Like an acupuncturist. His hands look like when Deadpool's hands get cut off and they start to regrow. It's so unnerving. Ugh. Oh, no, thank you. Oh, like the movie Puppet Master. I just can't. Um, went and got her badges, met Chloe, thanked her, thanked her for her help, gave her a little hug. Um, the partner party was that night. They had a big ass lounge. There was the partner party and the block party were actually really well done this year. Um, yeah, the partner party and the and the block party were surprisingly well done. The partner party, the lounge was this like indoor outdoor landing area that I that used to be kind of public access. Uh no, professionally catered by professional bartenders, Rini. Um no open solo cups. 
So surprise, surprise, to my knowledge, I've not heard about any stories of anyone being dosed this year. Um, beer and wine and, and bubbly, complimentary, and bottomless. Two stories still came out? Yeah, I mean, I was sure there'd be someone, but it's it drastically reduced. There, there at, at the partner party the year they had the solo cups, there were like a half dozen from that party alone. Good beer. It was like uh, Stella and Heineken and a couple of local IPAs. It was significantly lower, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Catered. They had a carving station. Um, They had a pasta station. They had like a like a taco bar. Um, they had like a little slider area. Like I had already eaten, so I wasn't hungry. But they they had like some like really decent food and and bottomless drink at the partner party. Everyone generally seemed to behave themselves. I don't remember anyone getting so shit faced that they got out of line. Um, I saw Robear. I saw Monkeyism, I saw Loco, I saw Vio, I saw Co Carnage, and actually got to chat with him for a second. Um, I saw my bud Garrett. Chat, I have become really good friends with Danica Rockwood. I'm not sure how that happened. Yeah, I, I was actually yelling. I was yelling up the escalator to, to Vio and Mike, trying to get their attention. And when I finally got their attention, they waved, and I was like, "I'll be up in a second. And then right behind them was Co. And Co. turned around and saw me and just goes, "Hey!" <laughs> and I was like, I, "I, I honestly, Jay, like I saw him. And I was like, Co. I read your tweet, man. I got you on my heart." And he just he gave himself a little chest pat and pointed back to me, and I was like, "All right, I'm like passable acquaintances with Co. Carnage now." Yeah. yeah, I love you. You look very, very, very pretty. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do so good at stream today. I'm yeah. going to stream so good. With all the words. All the English words. And some other words, too. Yes, ma'am. I love you. Have a good day. I'm glad you're home. People say nice things about you. They're so nice. They are so nice. All right, bye. Love you, baby. I did not see any of the kick streamers. I would have fucking shoulder shivered one of them if it like i had heard that they were being gross and live streaming it i'd have been i'd have been on the news i have i okay full disclosure i've had a recurring fantasy about getting in a just a morally justifiable fight with somebody at a con for a decade you know what i mean like somebody lays a hand on one of my friends Somebody bullies somebody and I see it. So, so if I, if I had seen one of those kick guys, like if one of those kick guys had come up to me, I'd have been like. <clears throat> like every single guy with the savior complex, I also just kind of quietly enjoy violence still. I would find, I would find socially acceptable outlets for violence when I was younger, like full contact sports or boxing. I did boxing for a while, but there's still just a part of me. Yeah, snarky. There's still just a part of me. That's like, I just like, I just like the idea of a good old Donnie Brook, you know, I'm not scared of, I'm not scared of getting punched. I'm not scared of being in a little tussle. Matter of fact, my nipples get hard kind of thinking about it a little bit. A little bit. Um, do I want anyone to go to the hospital? No. Goodness, no. I'm talking about a good old-fashioned scrap. That's right. If I box for too long, I get CTE and I start having Republican thoughts. So anyway, if it's a supremely punchable face, there's a, there's a part of me who's like, I could be on the news. So the partner party was great. Uh... Who else did I see there? I saw Sam. See him? Um, I met people, and I feel terrible that I don't remember most of their names. There was just so many people. There was so many people there. 
Uh, I bumped into Clutch Shot, who is another Richmond partner who's killing it on Fortnite these days. Um, Jesus, there were just so many people there. I saw Frost, old Frost Prime. Uh, oh, I bumped into uh, Point Crow. Freaking uh, Point Crow. And because of Noah, Point Crow was excited to meet me, which felt backwards. Saw Domestic Dan. Uh, and again, saw saw Danica. And Danica and I have been around each other a lot, especially for stuff like um, St. Jude. And Danica has been kind enough to like invite me out to do things. But generally, I'm so like jet lagged that I kind of bow out of stuff so that I can rest up. And so I saw Danica and Danica at one point comes up to me and just goes, can I finally hug you? And I was like, I don't know that we've ever hugged before. So if you're into it, sure, I'm a hugger. And then there were, there were a couple of times where we ended up just like sneaking off to a corner and just girl talking it up. I may have had to pick Dan. Oh, Dan Clancy. Yeah, you're talking about fucking Dan Clancy. Yeah, I thought you were meant like domestic Dan. I was like, no, absolutely not. I refuse to believe that domestic Dan let himself go that far. No, you mean Dan Clancy. Yes, you absolutely had to pick Dan Clancy up off the floor at, a, at an event. At the blurp party. <clears throat> Have you met Dan Clancy yet? That guy seems hilarious. I am not a big Dan Clancy fan, if I'm being honest. The couple of times that I've spoken one-on-one -on -one with Dan Clancy at events, he's told me horrible things with a huge smile on his face. Which is big Lex Luthor energy, even if he's packaged kind of like Willie Nelson. At TwitchCon Amsterdam a couple of years ago, he smiled while he told me about the fact that he might take away my 70-30 split. And roll it back to 50-50 and make me re-earn it. He was smiling because that was a good way to pad Amazon's bottom line, but he was telling me that I was going to need to pad Amazon's bottom line so that he didn't lose his job. And I was like, oh, for real? What a neat innovation that is. I can't wait for that to roll out. What hotel did you say you were staying at and in which room? Ah, oh, you beat me to it. <clears throat> so while he does have a much more folksy approachable exterior candy coating than Emmett Shear did Emmett Shear also didn't like me okay uh Dan does not seem like he's in my corner <laughs> is Dan Clancy the penguin is a sociopath who chose human skin uh, while I was at the party, I had about six people, including Pete, trying to get me into the blurp light stream party. And I kept fucking up the online form to get into the blurp light stream party. I kept shooting myself in the foot. So Nate and I excused ourselves. Nate and I excused ourselves to go to Tacos El Gordo, which was a block away from my hotel. And every single morning I would wake up and the smell of cooked meats would fill up our hotel room because we'd leave the windows open at night. Because that was when Tacos El Gordo started cooking meat. So it was uh, carne asada, al pastor, uh, brisket, like rose meat. No, brisket. No, brisket. And then these were chorizo. And then a couple of Coke Zeros. Tacos in Texas would probably be a pretty a pretty swell place to have tacos. But if you're also going to have tacos, Southern California is going to steer you right for sure. I don't think Emmett liked anything other than money. At least Dan Clancy likes DJing. I don't fair. You got to hang out with Nate too? Yeah, Nate came down. Heather was supposed to come down, but she literally caught COVID the day of the flight. Nate tested every day that he was there and posted the test results with 
a photo of the date on his watch so that people would know that he wasn't just bringing it down. <clears throat> Uh, so we went to, down to Tacos del Gordo and talked shop. Um, I'll tell you guys more about it as it becomes more concrete, but Nate and I are working on something. Nate and I are working on something, and uh, I, I think it could... You know how I was like... You know how I was interviewing for a part-time job to sort of bridge the revenue gap here recently? Something to do at night when I wasn't streaming? And I, did, I didn't end up taking it. Nate heard about that. And pulls me aside for tacos and goes, I got an idea if you're looking for work outside of stream. Rumor has it I might be pulling myself back into the music industry. Um... At that point, I turned to Nate and I was like, listen, six or seven people, including Pistol Pete, are trying to get me into this stupid blurt party. I should go down there and I should get turned away at the door. At least I can tell them I tried. Right? Like, that's that, that tracks logic-wise. These people have been trying to get me in. I should get to the door. They'll be like, no, you old fat bastard, get out. Get out of here. Shoo. Crazy person. <clears throat> so I'm going down there and I'm rehearsing this conversation I was going to have with the front door security. Hi, my name's Ryan. Uh, I uh, was, I've been trying to get on the list all night. Six people tell me I'm good, but I keep messing up the form. So could you look and see if I'm on the, okay, you got this, Ryan, you got this. And I walked in behind a group of people, like young, well-dressed people. I was not. I was wearing, you'll be surprised to find out, I was wearing a Henley and shorts and flip-flops. And I walked up behind this group of, like, hot young people. And I went to open my mouth to be like, excuse me, I'm not on the list, but... And I went, uh, and they went, have a nice night, sir. And they slipped a VIP band on me and just pushed me through the door. Oh, yeah, no, Pete, it was you, it was Garrett, it was Vio, it was, like, six people... Six people were pulling strings trying to make that happen. <clears throat> I should get a Henley T sponsorship. If I could find a company that put out like comfortable, heathered, good looking Henleys, I would buy 40 of them. It's just so much better. Like it looks so much better than a, just a t-shirt does. So I walked into this party. Uh, it was loud. It was actually kind of emptying out, which I think is why I got in. Uh, the first floor is, was a dance club. I wasn't interested in that. That shit was loud. Loud and filled with drunk horny people. And I was like, yeah, I'm good. Second floor was still loud, but it was more of a bar. And then the third floor was like a rooftop area. It was very crowded. Um, I saw Sequisha for a split second. Anthony Kong fans stroked my beard. And then I kind of excused myself. And I went to, um, let's see, let's see if they got like their website going here. Get out of here, you. I went to a second party at this place called the Coinop Game Room. And this play this this party was run by was run by Stream Elements who do all of our activations. And it it's a barcade that literally was across that's my hotel back there. So I was on my way back going like, "Man, I'm tired. I'm ready to to call it a night." And I was like, oh, there's the stream elements thing. They told me I should come to it. It's literally across the street from my hotel. It has all these like free games of which I played zero games. I just, the idea of going to a conference and playing more video games, I just, you know, like maybe, maybe there are porn stars that go to the adult film awards and blow each other in the bathroom, but I just could not have been less interested there was so much pinball and I just couldn't, I was so tired and I just couldn't bring myself to care. 
good games too they had elvira they had godzilla um they had deadpool i think i think they had deadpool they definitely had a marvel one yeah there's deadpool they had the old adams family one but i just i could not bring myself to care about the video games I go to check in and I was like, hey, I'm probably not on the list. I'm shit at filling out forms. I'm 44. Technology fucking eludes me. <clears throat> and the guy says, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, man. You're not on the list. And I was like, hey, no worries. I appreciate you trying. And then at that point, Knives, our contact at Stream Elements, pokes his head out, clearly a couple of cocktails in, and goes, holy shit, it's Taffy. Get that guy in here. Security steps out of the way. I walk in. They genuinely treated me like royalty. They walked me around, showed me the entire area. They had food, again, complimentary open bar. They called me a VVIP. <laughs> Marvel Strike Force, by the way, is active right now. Just throwing that out there. Mobile players only. Um... We, they, they introduced me to all, all the, ex, like the founder, they introduced me to the founder. They introduced me to like the, 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 you know, several heads of departments. And they kept chatting with me for a little bit. And then XQC came in and they're like, we got to go. And I was like, yeah, you got to go. <laughs> I'm not mad. <laughs> Wait, like, I was like, listen, I'm a realist. Uh, I'm no, I'm no fool. I was like, yeah, XQC is here. You probably should make sure that they're okay. Um, so I sat around there, had a couple of drinks, didn't talk to anybody while I was there. I, I literally just sat quietly by myself and was super happy to kind of be left alone for a minute. Walked across the street, went to sleep. That's day zero. That's my day zero. Um, Friday, Brizzy and I walked the con floor. The con floor was pretty depressing. In years past, there wasn't like more content, but in the Vegas center and in Amsterdam, the, it felt like the con ceilings were lower. So everything felt more compact and it felt fuller. Whereas this year in San Diego, it took us 10 minutes to walk from one end of the con to the other. It was never all that packed with people. And there were big booths for people like State Farm and Chevron. You guys know how I fuck with big oil. If only they'd gotten Exxon. Um, oh, the swag bags were depressing. I, didn't, I don't have one to show you because I didn't take it. They tried to hand me the swag bag when I, got my, when I got my badge. And I looked at it and it was a little plastic bag, like a little plastic bag that had Twitch on the side. Cheap plastic bag. And when you opened it up, there was acne skincare and two analog stick toppers for like a PlayStation DualShock controller or, or an Xbox controller. One said Twitch and the other said Chevron. And then there was a plastic lanyard that was like a plastic strap that was like sharp on the edges. So I saw that and I just went, they went here, here's your swag. And I looked at it and I was like, no, you hold on to it. I'm good. No, thank you. You can throw this away. I'm not going to do it. Let me see if I can find this. Somebody posted it to, uh, Somebody posted it to the, to the Twitch subreddit how disappointed they were in the swag bags. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, those were not good. Apparently at Rotterdam, according to Noah, they just gave out the bag with nothing in it. They just gave out the cheap plastic bag. Oh, Jesus. Um, I should have, I should have probably guessed. Oh, here we go. That's the entire swag bag. Oh, I guess this wasn't a lanyard strap. This was meant to be a clip for this in case you wanted to wear this stylish bag as a purse. Hey, nerds. 
treat your fucking acne and buy your gas at Chevron. Go TwitchCon, bleed purple. Danica tweeted she got cut by it. Yeah, the fucking edges were sharp. These extremely relevant sponsors make me feel good about the future of this company. Oh, I am working on YouTube starting this week. I uh, like, listen, I had a good time at TwitchCon, but based on what I saw there like this, I give this company five years. <laughs> Next year, they'll give you $10 off coupons for dehumidifiers for the basements you gamers don't leave. Partners had visors and sunglasses. Yeah, I've got them. I'll go find them when we get to when we get to that point in the story, which I think is this this day. Um, <clears throat> give partners an extra discount at the store. Just don't create a bunch of trash. I did not go to the store this year. I'm sorry. I brought back nothing to give you folks. Uh, I just didn't care. I just didn't care. I was not about like I was already worried about making money when I came back. The last thing I wanted to do was go give Twitch another three or four hundred dollars at their swag store. That's true. Twitch is owned by an indie company. I heard rumors, Pete, that they were giving away some of those booths for free just so the floor would look filled out. Um. So Friday, uh, we went down and walked the floor. It did not take long. I saw the fine folks from St. Jude. Uh, they were there and obviously very lovey-dovey. We adore them. Um, I got recognized as a streamer. Uh, old Felroth was there. I forget who this Felroth is. This is the story is, is of the newest form. denizen of the cave. Remember. Boos are expensive at TwitchCon, 5,000 for 10 by 10. Not if they get given to you for free just so that you can fill up the space. Ollie Queen, tier uh tier one, 12 month gifty from JJ Madison going into month number eight. Anyway, I bumped into Felroth, who who recognized me as a as a streamer. And then next to Felroth was a person named Kamikaze. Hold please. And Kamikaze recognized me as a voice actor from Forgotten Paths and said, I'm really enjoying your character Locke in Noah's podcast, Forgotten Paths. Would you mind if I got a photograph with you? Felroth is Smashly and Smashly and Hunters, uh, but not a mod there. Gotcha. Oh, that's a, he's a Daniel the Demon mod. He was so nice. Yeah, Kamikaze was super nice. So like he, you know, he I, obviously because Daniel and I are friends, he probably knows that I'm a streamer, but. He's not somebody who hangs out here, but he, he was like, yo, I totally listened to Forgotten Paths and I'm loving Locke as a character. So yeah, he, Kamikaze was great. Very nice. It was nice bumping into both of them. Yeah, it was fun. I've never been recognized for something outside of streaming before. Bell plays a lot of games in Smash's community with Smash. He's familiar to a lot of people. Gotcha. That's what I thought. I tried to place it. No, it was of no help. So, uh, so Friday we walked the floor. We met some people. We went and spent some time in the partner lounge, bumped into a bunch of folks. Um, again, the partner lounge was like well catered. I went up there for lunch and they had like hot dogs and Bavarian pretzels. Um, like a nacho bar. They had a big refrigerator that was just stocked with like Coke Zero, uh, Coca-Cola, seltzer waters, um, iced teas, stuff like that. <clears throat> hey, Alyssa, what's going on, friend? Chaos, welcome back as well. Um, and then after afterwards, I kind of had to dismiss myself. I had to run back into the uh, downtown area. 
I bumped into Galen and Jay, my financial advisors. I bumped into Ernest, who's my accountant. That was fun. I, I was invited. I don't, I don't want to make it very clear. I was invited to crash Simper Turtles thing that was being sponsored by Champion. I have a photo. I have our, our traditional photograph of me with Champion that I will roll out just as soon as I get to clear up some of the lens flare in it. I got to put it through Photoshop and just kind of brighten it up. You know, this is a, this is a, this is a kind of a darker space. Um, went down and talked to old Champoon Poon about the, the state of the union for Twitch. Um, they were having a lavish affair. They had rented out a private bar in a restaurant and it was open bar, free food, and Champion was picking up the bill. They were having a fucking soiree. It was very cool. Uh, grabbed myself a couple of margaritas on Champion's dollar, which was obviously very uh, generous. Talked to him for a little bit. Thanks, Simper Turtle, for letting me. I felt like the ex-wife showing up to collect child support at a birthday party. I was just like, hi. <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt. I just was here to say hello and grab a drink and then I'll be on my way. Um, that was fun. That was like, that was nice. Uh, went back to the hotel, crashed for a little bit. And then, uh, got a call from Tyler Apocalypto. And he was like, yo, let's grab a drink. So Nate and I went down to a place called the, 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 the photographs are horrible because it was dark as shit. That's a steak. That's a salad, olives, fries, buffalo wings. We went to a place called the Whiskey House. It's a sweet Italian sausage, chorizo, and a bratwurst with uh, Dijon mustard and a chutney, sauerkraut, peppers, sauteed onions and crostinis and then just those are olives you've seen olives before yeah this was good this was a this this, this was a, a a pretty good little meal i was surprised it was a very tiny steak like it was a very flat steak but they managed to cook it to a medium rare and i could cut it with a fork so they did good i ate the entire thing the olives were good too they were pitted they were lovely. It was nice. Um, so it was me and Brizzy and Nate and our friend Nicole, who's from Sub Pop Records. Uh, and then uh, Tyler came down and Tyler brought us Mini Kitty. I don't know if you guys know Mini Kitty. AKA my daughter, Katie. <clears throat> so that's that's katie katie is the is the social media manager for sonic the hedgehog we met katie at saint jude and katie was about to go cartwheeling through a pretty questionable part of memphis because she wanted to go see the bass pro shop she wanted to go see the bass pro shop but she's like she like basically comes up to my rib cage and weighs like 50 pounds. And I was like, oh, Katie, please, darling. Let me and Kate walk you to the Bass Pro Shop. And at that point, Kate, twitch.tv forward slash Kate, and I were adopted as, as Katie's mom and dad. And so Tyler comes into the whiskey bar, the whiskey house, and goes, Taffy, I have a surprise for you. And he steps out of the way. And I went, oh my God, it's my daughter. And I jumped up and gave her a great big hug. And we sat there and uh, had a couple cocktails and caught up. Tyler's, Tyler's fucking great, man. I dig that dude. I keep bumping into him for like St. Jude stuff. He comes and visits Richmond quite a bit because he's got a lot of friends here. Um, he, he is a real stand-up individual, man. I dig that guy's vibe. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Gray, Gray, calls, uh, Gray calls olives salt grapes. Um, Saturday, with regards to the whole, like, Nate and I had to go talk about, like, a potential outing, a new potential outing with, uh, with me and old, old Nate Beck, Nathan Sophia Beck. Um, again, 
I can't, I don't want to go into too many details on it, but Saturday morning I had brunch with Nate and Harris Heller. Fucking, I, I dislike, I dislike that he's this handsome. I want to hate this guy so bad because he's handsome and he's talented and fuck him for those reasons. He's a good dude. Irritatingly good dude. Ugh. Bun Barian, that's reason enough. He's handsome and he's talented and, and he's a success. Do I need more reasons to dislike him? And he's he's quirky in a way that's like not off-putting. It's, it's charming. Ew, he's so charming. Whatever. Anyway, we had a lovely lunch with Harris. We talked some shop. I had, listen, I don't remember which one of you sons of bitches mentioned chicken fried steak in my presence. Younger than me, more successful than me, certainly more handsome than me, more charming than me. If I don't kill him, we'll become great friends, I think. The videos I was going to send you about the beacon stuff are his videos, lol. Of course they were, foo. God damn it. Anyway, chicken fried steak, hash browns, eggs over easy, and two sausage links at the Broken Yolk Cafe. <coughs> we had ourselves a little meeting with Harris about some music stuff that may happen. Yeah, Broken Yolk Cafe was pretty good. The, the, the chicken fried steak was a, little, was a little dense, but it was tender enough. Gravy was good. I slathered it all in hot sauce anyway. But after that, which was kind of a stressful morning, because I was like, holy shit, I'm having a meeting with Harris Heller. I hope I remember anything that I used to know about the music industry. Meeting went really, really well. But I was stressed out. And so I immediately went to the partner lounge afterwards, hit the resin pin, got, and I mean super high, like Seth saw me, right? Old man Seth is. Seth saw me and goes, Taffy. And that gravelly voice that he has, Taffy. And I walked over and he goes, Seth. And I was like, holy shit, Seth, what's going on, dude? He's like, you don't have to sit down with me. And I was like, I'm going to sit down with you. What are you talking about? This is the partner lounge, by the way. It was all this indoor area and all this outdoor area. And there were like, you can see all the trees and the reflection. There was this shady area where we spent most of our time outdoors, but there were there were hammocks that nobody would get into. So I came over and sat down with Flame Goat, Brizzy, and Seth. And I took a hit off this resin pin. And I mean, like, the moment I breathed out, Seth was just like, so how you been, man? And I was like, good. <laughs> Excuse me one second. And I just hobbled to hear brizzy tell it i i i montgomery burns hobbled my way over to the hammock laid down and immediately fell asleep and then i had dreams that incorporated the conversation that brizzy and flame goat and seth were having behind me and then at one point nate nate i am told walked up i heard him but i didn't see him nate walked up stood over me and goes of course Taffy found a hammock. And I slept for two hours in the partner lounge. High as the San Diego cloud cover. I woke up. And I turned to Anthony and I said, It could be the munchies talking. But I could really, really go for some pasta. So we walked to a place called Nona's in Little Italy. Sometimes you just need a fucking nap. Amen. I earned a nap that day. I had to wake up streamer early. So we walked down to Little Italy, which I think I have a photograph of down here. Yeah, Little Italy, man. In San Diego, 
uh, is kind of a vibe. This whole street is just lined with like vegetation and outdoor patio seating and just Italian flags as far as the eye can see. Brizzy said he felt so uh, at home. So we started off with the fried calamari and the prosciutto with burrata and really, really good olive oil. And then I had, they called it a bolognese. This was essentially spaghetti and meatballs, but it was good. I wasn't upset. Yeah, fr uh, calamari fritti, or fried calamari. And then Brizzy got the uh, parpadelle with, uh, with a short rib ragu. And he, he crushed it. He, he, he cleared his plate, I cleared my plate. Um, we had a couple of, uh, pistachio cannolis from their in-house bakery. And then we walked back to the hotel and promptly fell asleep again. I've never played a Soul Calibur game. That might be an excellent joke. Oog is just lost on me. Hey, Gamer Girl, thank you for the 20 stream streak. Hey, Taffy, welcome back. Good news, I'm now employed. First day is today and I start tonight. Hell yeah, Gamer Girl, congratulations. We, we love fiscal responsibility in this channel. Um, so we went and did the, we went and did the block party. Chat, they had to do this because if the rumors are to be believed, they wanted to schedule TwitchCon in October, which they always do. And every time it's in San Diego, they put the block party at Petco Field. What's cool about doing the block party at Petco Field? Well, the first year they let us run the bases because the, the concert was in center field. They had music. The concert was in center field. I got to run the bases at Petco. That was pretty neat. Every year since then, it's gotten significantly worse. Last, the, the last time we were in San Diego, nobody was allowed on the field. Everybody had to sit up in the seats. They didn't provide any food or drink. Your ticket bought you access to the stadium, and then they opened up vendors where you could pay ballpark stadium prices for food and beer. <clears throat> this year, they couldn't do that. Rumor has it, they messed up the scheduling and lost out on their time slot in October to like a, a farm equipment tractor trailer show. So they had to roll TwitchCon back to September. Well, they couldn't get Petco. Why? Because the Padres were there playing against the White Sox. The Padres had a three game homestand during TwitchCon. They couldn't get into Petco. So what did they do instead? Come on now. They rented the heart of the gas lamp district. This was one of the entrances to a block party where they closed off this the area for two and a half. Who's done this to me? Gamer Girl with two dollars and forty-five cents of biddies. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Fiscal responsibility means more taffy tips. I would like everybody to get more fiscally responsible, then. Thank you, Gamer Girl. So yeah, that, that, arch, that archway is like right here. They closed off like this whole area. And as we were getting in there, I saw like the big fences that were going up. And I was like, what happens to the restaurants that are trapped inside the nerd zone? Turns out when you rent this area, any restaurant that's trapped inside it just becomes a caterer for your event. So we walked in and instead of this being a street, there were like, there was like a karaoke with a live band in the middle. So you'd pick a song and then the band would play the song and you'd sing karaoke with a live band. Um, and then all these different restaurant fronts were like where the bathrooms were. And then on top of that, they would bring catered food out to folding tables at the street. They had carving stations. There was one place where Brizzy and I stopped and got um, rock shrimp tempura. Uh, there was like uh, one place that was putting out steak. Um, 
There was a a, a a fire truck that had been converted into a brick oven pizza oven. So like where all the ladders and stuff would have been stored was like a brick pizza oven. And they were cranking out wood fired pizzas. Um, it was surprisingly well done. And again, we had drink tickets on our wristbands, but they were only for hard alcohol. The wine and beer and champagne and non-alcoholic beverages were complimentary and bottomless. So that block party was kind of litty, if I'm being honest. Here, here's a bunch of us hanging out at the block party. You got Soren and Cauliflower. Ugh, I forget. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Flame Goat and Nate. It was a little crowded, but also we never did the smart thing, which I think was to force our way into one of these restaurants and then just pick like a quiet table and sit down. Yeah, Nel Nelstar, Robert, a handful of people came through. Yeah, losing out to the farm show really helped them make a much more informed uh, informed choice, I think. Like the, the yeah, the block party turned out really like surprisingly well. <clears throat> After the block party was over, uh, we were not ready to be done with the night. So we found a nearby place and got margaritas and carne asada fries. Again, this looks like cat food on top of french fries. It's delicious. It's so good. Um, and tacos. Just a smattering of tacos. A shrimp taco, fish taco, a couple of steak tacos. I think one of these is chorizo, one's chicken. And just a shitload of different kinds of margaritas. And Nate was kind enough to pick up the tab for that. I did miss the one of the early early meals we went to, like on Friday. We drove out. We drove out to this like food court, kind of like what Rini took us to in in at Gen Con. This like food hall, <clears throat> and we got uh, Korean. So we got mandu, and then I got uh, Brizzy got the same thing, uh, a bulgogi burrito with kimchi fried rice and cabbage and a gochujang sauce to drizzle on it. And then Nate and I got three different masubis to share. And I've never heard of this before, but Nate and I agreed we love carne asada fries. We like this better. This is bulgogi kimchi fries. And we paid to have spam cubes add, added to it. So this is like gochujang and like gochugaru flavored aioli drizzle and bulgogi meat. This was very, very good. Interesting little place, that food hall. That was the first, first real meal that I had that I took a photo of while I was there on Friday. Um, Sunday was a pretty lazy day. I woke up late. I went to a private Devolver thing, which was really cool. I got to hang out there with... Ooh, who was it? Ellie Joy Panic. Ellie was great. Very cool. A Brit expat currently living in, in San Francisco. But Ellie and I sat and talked for like an hour up, at the, up in the Devolver booth. I talked to Mary Kish. Uh, who is from, who's from Twitch. Um, yeah, talked to Jess from Devolver, talked to Clara from Devolver. Got a little swag bag from Devolver. There were like game stations and stuff set up. I just couldn't bring myself to play video games while I was there. I also wasn't hungry. They had food, they had drink. It was a really neat little, uh, it was a suite at the Hard Rock Cafe. Like it was a whole ass suite at the Hard Rock. And I got up there and hung out with them for a little bit. Went and talked to Stream Elements for a little bit. Talked to St. Jude for a little bit. Went to the Partner Lounge. Um, went to the Partner Lounge and uh, saw Bloody Faster and Lobos. Then excused ourselves to go back to the uh, 
Little Italy area to go to a place called Ironside. I saw this behind the bar where we had uh we had a little food with uh monkeyism. In San Diego, they're eating the fish, they're eating the oysters of the people that live there. We got 24 different raw oysters. We got a like a ceviche. We got a couple of bottles of Viognier wine. I haven't had I haven't had this many raw oysters in a while. It was delightful. Some peel and eat shrimp. <clears throat> and then we excused ourselves. We excused ourselves from that so that we could go to Minya Ultra. And get uh, some of the best ramen in San Diego. I added butter to mine. How's monkeyism? Great, beautiful, as effervescent as ever. Every bit the delight that she was. La last time we were here, you may remember two years ago, we didn't get to have the braised chashu for this because Noah was a half an hour late. This year, everybody was on time because Noah wasn't in San Diego. So we got the braised chashu. Oh, oh, oh. I can't do pork fat if it doesn't melt like butter. I took one bite of this pork fat and it dissolved into smoke and pork flavor on my tongue. This braised chashu was crazy good. And this was Pogman and Pogman's wife and Brizzy and me and Nate and our friend Nicole from Sub Pop. You want an interesting time? The Dollop podcast has a two-parter on New York oysters. I would absolutely, genuinely kind of, yeah, I would absolutely, uh, not trying to be cute, I would eat that up. I went to um, Annapolis, Maryland one time, Oog, and I was at a museum. And I was at this museum, and a guy in a journal was talking about how he was invited to a dinner, but he couldn't possibly eat because he had had two oysters at lunch. And everybody giggles, and then the guy who runs the museum goes, yeah, but oysters used to be like this. And he marched out an oyster shell the size of this ramen bowl. And so, so he was like, yeah, so if this guy had two oysters, it meant that he basically had two, yeah, ba basically had like two ocean steaks. A fucking tonkatsu ramen, Matthew, right? Oh my god. Is it the best ramen? It's a Michelin star. It's Michelin recommended. It's not a Michelin star ramen joint, but it is Michelin recommended. Uh, this chashu might be the best chashu that I've had. It's like paper thin and it dissolves on your tongue. But this might be a top three bowl of ramen that I've had in the United States. I've not had ramen outside the States. I'm sure there's better ramen, but this is definitely up there for one of the better bowls of ramen I've had in my, in my time. Um... So we went back and uh, I was ready to pass out if I'm being real with you. I was ready to pass out and call it, call it a call it a day. Um, Nate rallied me though and said, hey, we got to go back out. Flame Goat and Loco want to get drinks. So obviously I got up. Went and had drinks with Flame Goat and Loco and Chrissy. And then Dan and Danica showed up and then Danica at one point scooches over to me and goes, Ooh, we can girl talk. And I was like, well, I'm like really good friends with Danica all of a sudden. Um, Nelstar showed up. <laughs> we, we harassed Doug, Doug. I don't know if y'all know Doug, Doug, but Doug, Doug walked through. That was the cool cat thing. We were joking about Loco was we were joking about uh, Loco was restarting Disapproving Owls. We were saying that Loco's, we were like, oh, Loco's just restarting Disapproving Owls. And then I went home and went to sleep, or was getting ready to go to sleep, and I saw this come out of all the people who were there. And I was like, son of a bitch, I knew it. I knew it. Um... So after we wrapped that up, uh, I went back, hit hit the resin pipe a couple times and fell asleep. 
I promised you if you'd stick around to the end of story time, I would tell you about one more hotel related incident. Um, so Brizzy and I woke up at 430 in the morning to make to make our 7am flight out of San Diego. At about 505, we hit the lobby of the hotel. The guy says, Hello, how may I help you? And I said, uh, I'd like to check out. And he goes, Okay, which room? And I, I had this verified by Brizzy. I said, Room 212. He goes, Wonderful. Oh, leaving a little early, I see. I thought he meant in the morning because it was almost, it was like, you know, the, the, it was still almost like four. Like it was 505. It had just become five o'clock in the morning. And I was like, Well, yep, early flight. I can't afford to sleep in until 11, unfortunately. And he says, okay, uh, it looks like the grand total for your stay is going to be 535. My room was comped. So I'd be like, oh, Taffy, why was there money on the balance of your invoice? Brizzy charged a cookie to the room. In my head, $5.35 sounds pretty high for a cookie. Turns out it's, ex it's almost exactly what they charge for a cookie. Once I got the correct invoice, I said, okay, sounds good. And he goes, run it on the card on file. And I was like, sure thing. And he says, uh, should I send it to the email here? I've got at live.com. Again, should have been a warning bell, but you have to remember this was all set up by Twitch. And for two and a half weeks, Twitch has been saying you should be getting emails from the hotel. And I was not getting emails from the hotel. So I was like, oh, you know what? Don't send it to that email. Send it to my email. And I gave him my email. And he goes, oh, okay. And he changes it out. <clears throat> and he goes, okay, it looks like you're all set. He doesn't say my name once during this whole thing. I go outside. I get in the car with Brizzy. We leave the hotel. We get all the way to the airport. You're never going to believe this chat. I was literally standing there and I was like, you know what I want? I want a fucking breakfast burrito. After all the bullshit we did last week, I find myself yearning for a breakfast burrito. I find an airport Qdoba that's doing breakfast burritos. I get one made. I go sit down at our gate and I'm getting ready to crack open my breakfast burrito. And I go, I'm going to look at this invoice. The invoice is for $537. I'm uh, 500 and change. It's like $537 for a single night. I look at the name of it. It is not me. It is room 312. And I have just checked out some dude from New Jersey who literally got there the night before and had multiple nights still on his stay. Now I can't eat my breakfast burrito because I have a, I have a chore. I call the hotel. It puts me through an automated system. It puts me on a wait of like, I'm waiting there for like 15 minutes. Nothing. I go, okay, well, it asked me for a confirmation number. I don't have my confirmation number. I never got an invoice, but I do have this dude's confirmation number. Maybe I'll pump that through. So I put the confirmation number in, which by the way, was very difficult because if you paused for even a second, it would just stop and be like, you added, or you put in confirmation number four. Is that correct? I'm like, no, asshole. I'm on my phone going back and forth between two screens. And I can't just cut and paste this thing. About a half hour into this phone call, I finally get a receptionist. Hello, and thank you for calling the Hyatt, you know, you know, whatever help desk how may i be of service to you hi i left the andaz san diego this morning and i told them i was checking out of room 212 but they checked me out of room 312 the only problem is i'm not this guy his stay was not finished uh and about 11 o'clock an army of maids are going to come kick him out of his room that he still has for multiple more nights 
And I just wanted to let you know before he wakes up that y'all should fix that so that he never knows. Okay, sir, thank you for letting me know. Is there anything I can help you with on your reservation? Uh, I feel like the previous thing I said is not landing on you. I checked a dude out of the hotel this morning who was not ready to leave, and I ran his fucking credit card, and now I have an invoice with his name and address on it. I understand that, sir. I'll see that that's taken care of. Is there anything I can help you with on your reservation? Uh, yeah, I guess I'd, I'd like a copy of my invoice. Okay, Mr. Caps, would you like that sent to your email? Will you read it off to me so I know for sure you guys aren't fucking up again? Ryan at McLaffyTaffy.com. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Have a wonderful day. I'm about to have a damn finer day than Steven behind the counter at the Andaz when old Adam from 312 comes down. I'm getting on a plane. This is about to be Steven behind the counter's fault. Fuck all that. I'm, I'm going to be two, three time zones away. I get the invoice. Sure enough, 375, or sorry, 575 for the cookie. <laughs> so I feel less stupid because if you take the decimal point and move it, it's the same price. It's just the decimal point was in a different location. Yeah, so like that that was the thing Ibisel is like when I went to go check out, I went to go check out and said they they said like, "Okay, so your total for your entire stay is going to be 575 or whatever." And I assumed it was for the like like you have to remember at a, if you're at a hotel, you're paying airport or cinema prices for stuff you buy in the little convenience marts in the hotel, right? You get a can of Coke, that's probably going to be $4 you know, for a can, for a 12 ounce can. You're paying for the the convenience of not having to leave a hotel, admittedly, probably in a place you're not familiar. Yeah, 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 but I'm not, like the cookie wasn't better than your average cookie. They're charging you that because they know they can get you. I, I paid what, like $6 for a Hot Pocket. Yeah, no, I'll spot you that one. I'll spot, I'll spot you vending machines. Vending machines used to fuck. Sure, there's no gas stations in downtown San Diego. So the options are I pay $20 each way for a Lyft or an Uber to go get a $2 Hot Pocket. <clears throat> I walk a half an hour each direction to go get a $2 Hot Pocket. Or I pay $6 and I don't have to leave the hotel. You know, that's how they get you. If I was a little more motivated, I would walk my happy ass down to the Ralph's 20 minutes away, pick up my $2 Hot Pocket and come back. Anyway, neither here nor there. I'm with you. I'm with you. $5 is a hell of a lot for like just a fucking snack cookie.